So we are here at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center. There's this exciting collaborations that we had with the Lee Lab here at MGH. And what the Lee Lab is interesting, in they're, they're interesting in X chromosomes, X chromosome silencing. So in female mammalian cells, we have two X chromosomes. One of them has to be silenced all the time, otherwise it would be lethal. The female mammalian cell contains two X chromosomes. And if genes were expressed from both of these X chromosomes in an uncontrolled manner, there would be an overdose of those RNA and protein molecules, and it would be lethal. So the, what the biological system is setting up is silencing one of those X chromosomes. What will bring us closer to, to answering the question, how does this silencing work, is to define the endectome, to define the proteins that are interacting with the exist RNA. And this is exactly what we did in this collaboration with Dr. Lee. There are a number of uh, big questions, if you will, in the field that um, led us to this project. Exist is a long non-coding RNA that um, is unique, right, in that uh, it is long, it is non-coding, and it completely coats a chromosome and makes changes to that chromosome. And that was behavior that was never described before for a non-coding RNA. There was also the problem of how an entire chromosome, which is 5% of the genome, okay, so imagine we have 46 chromosomes and the X chromosome is 5% of all of our chromosomes, how an 5% of the genome can be simultaneously inactivated by the action of one transcript. And so um, in order to really gain insight into that question, we have to understand what it is that the RNA is interacting with. Over much of the last 20 years, uh, uh, many, many groups, including our group, uh, have embarked on a mission to identify interacting partners. So without knowing what Exist is interacting with, it would be very difficult to understand the series of changes that would be downstream that eventually would lead to silencing. We teamed up with uh, Dr. Haas, who is an expert um, proteomicist, uh, to tackle this problem. Willie, by reputation, is somebody who uh, would be an excellent collaborator and who has all the expertise and knowledge to, um, to make the proteomics work. Where we came in is, is to define what are those proteins. And we did a combined uh, approach using spectral counting, but also uh, M3 quantitative approach. And this is where it showed to us, okay, there's not a lot of protein coming down with these RNA pull-downs, but the M3 approach was still able to quantify a very amazing data set on that. And in general for this is we, in this case, we can do up to 10 pull-downs in three hours, which means bringing down the analysis of one of those pull-downs to 18 minutes. Bringing the throughput, all of a sudden you can say, okay, let's not try it only on two conditions. We can really look at a lot of conditions to make sure that we get the right indirectome information. They have this method now, which they call the, the simultaneous precursor selection M3 method, which is further improvement of our M3 approach. And what this allows us is to really uh, use isobaric labeling, use TMT at a high throughput with very, very great accuracy to look at those many samples and really play on the same level as genomics was. And this is changing right now. So this is changing. We're closing the performance gap between proteomics and genomics so that we really can look at this, this large amount of samples.